what is the difference <coughs> in between horse psychology and horse training? Horse training is really doing training. And horse psychology is being, knowing something about the horse as an animal. Everybody knows that when our car is broken, we go to the garage and we ask the garage man to fix our car. But when you have a horse, you can't ask anybody to fix your horse and then bring it back and then you will know that if I push this button, that will happen, that will happen, that will happen. No, a horse is a system. And all my movies are made about the psychology uh, of horses and I think the psychology is very important to know something about. I also make a very uh, strong difference in discipline at work and when you are free. Perhaps you saw movies when he was free, that he could touch me and he, well, he, he, he was more free. In work, and this is now I use the Seraton, in work I want discipline. But not only from him, that's the main difference. I have to be disciplined. I have to be focused on him and I have to be strong. I noticed that the more weak somebody walks, the more soft and weak the horse gets. Perhaps for some it's, it's ideal to have a very slow horse, but well, let's say that's a matter of which, whatever you like. And if you're happy with your horse, please stay happy, be happy. What I want to show you today is some work uh, of Piaf and I have later on some Spanish walk because the weather and the circumstances uh, are good. Why are the weather or circumstances good? Well, it's pretty sunny and there's also a lot of wind. And wind triggers the, the senses. The senses of a horse are more open when it's windy. So if you want to do an exercise with expression, which is yeah, which is an expression, expressive exercise, this is a perfect day to do so. And since every exercise is um, an experience to go on, to build on, this is a perfect day for an ice cream. Okay, I never know what happens. I mean, he's an animal, he's not a garage, he's not a, not a, not a, not a garage, he's not a car which I brought to the garage. We have been training this thing for some time, and I just hope that uh, I can show you a nice collective Piaf with power. I mean, the Piaf has to be a little bit powerful. Now you notice that he doesn't wear a bit. Uh, well, I, I change the work on the long rein. I always use the Celeton or Capton, or the Cabeson, the many names. I call it Celeton PT because I make them myself. Or a snapper, a bit. Um, and it's with all, everything counts. You are the one who decides the, the roughness of the, the thing you use. And I also use, perhaps you, you didn't see, a wooden stick. This is a stick I'm very attached to. <laughs> I'm like a dog. No. This stick, yeah. it's dry, it's very dry, and if you, if you hit too hard with it, it will break. And I think you should only touch the horse when you're working with it. Touch something else and hit it. Sometimes you have to have a force, more forceful correction. The correction is always uh, less or the same as the horse with you. But this horse doesn't need a lot of corrections, this horse only needs directions. And that's for instance the difference in between uh, psychology and training. Okay, let's let's do something. Wow.
since what just happened was something I, I always say in my movies. First of all, he was dropping. And probably he did that because we already did something and he thought it was a moment of getting relaxed. But we also could see that as soon as I wanted to start, I wasn't clear. And he was giving this Spanish walk, which I didn't want. When you have trained your horse uh, to do Spanish walk, never stand in front of him because he will do the exercise and he will then coincidentally not hurt him, touch him. So it was a nice example of how not to uh, start with an exercise. Let's try it again. Okay, well. something on tape, something doesn't work out fine. I think it was a nice example of how to build up tension, this, this, this working mode, and then relax, hopefully.